brothers and sisters, one of the things I think about Our Lady, I think about the theme of light. And this is very much tied to her immaculate heart. The heart is the core of our being. It's it's the place where we are, who we are, you could say. It's the, it's the root of our intellect and our will. Our ability to know and our ability to love find root in the heart, in our deepest core. And everything we do flows from our heart. And, and so our life uh, reflects the kind of heart that we have. And ultimately, God wants to perfect that heart. He wants to perfect our deepest core with his sanctifying grace. And of course, we cannot see sanctifying grace. That would be to see God himself. That would be to see the invisible spirit. Um, but we can see the effects of grace. We could, St. Thomas Aquinas says, we can judge by, by the effects. Uh, we could see the hidden mystery of God veiled, if you wish, as signs of the way we love, the way we're kind, the way that we forgive, that the way that we have patience, that the way that we forgive, especially our enemies, uh, forgive those who irritate us and frustrate us, forgive those who have spoken ill against us. We know all too well that our human nature by itself, uh, very much frustrated without grace, um, doesn't rise to forgiveness, um, but rather falls into unforgiveness or resentment and anger. You know, um, and, and, and the whole myriad of uh, ways in which we could, you know, lose our peace and our joy with the, all the different disordered passions in us, pulling us in all different directions. And that's why prayer and the Holy Spirit is very important to sanctify us and bring us together. And so Mary's heart, her immaculate heart, was a place that was well-ordered, um, that her thought, her reason, was governed so sweetly and gently by grace. Uh, she, she didn't suffer this inner confusion that we had. Now she experienced temptation, she experienced the the, 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 the suffering of temptation, you could say, the trial to, to, to try and dislodge this interior harmony in her life. And so this theme of light, because the more that we are internally ordered, the more that we we don't commit vice but we live in virtue we our, our actions have the divine seal of truth upon them that, that we act truly in terms of god's truth we act in a way that is um in accord with god's being then 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 our minds are uh, they're fulfilled with that truth when we we act and and so there's light starts to enter the deepest core of our being and that light, that truth that we live, uh, the gospel, the word of God, is sourcing God himself. So the more we live that truth, we live the light and our minds therefore get conformed to it and therefore we get illuminated. Now, Mary lived with this real communion, with this eternal light. And there was a monk called St. Simeon, the new theologian, the orthodox monk. Um, Pope Benedict gave a, a beautiful catechesis once about him. Um, in the life of the church and he was very much fascinated with the theme of light you know and he was very much conscious that the christian uh truly alive in the grace of the holy spirit should develop a conscious sense of god's presence in their life and he took a very strong uh example that maybe if the person hadn't developed that sense of that presence you know one should examine one's heart for conversion or there might be something blocking you know, because the one of the things is that we can just because we go to mass or we go to the sacraments, you know, we might be doing all these things, but there might be some area of our heart and our life that is unredeemed, that that we are not really breaking our heart over and repenting about, uh, because we are under the false sense of security that I go to mass, I read, I pray, but 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 there's some block there against the Holy Spirit and therefore against the light, and. 
you know, since Simeon, you know, he has this experience and Pope Benedict speaks about it, that he had lots of experiences of light. One day he was praying in his room, his whole room filled up with light, but he was troubled deeply whether this was really an illusion or was this really from God? And how did he know that he really had the Holy Spirit? How did he know that he really had God with him? And and, and Pope, he, he says that he then had this experience of great love for his brethren, even those who persecuted him. He was greatly persecuted. And so for the person who really challenged him, once he experienced that great love for them, he had realized that grace must have surely been with him. So a sure sign of God's presence. Pope Benedict then comments on this and he says that uh, he had a sure proof that the source of love in him was Christ's presence. He was certain that having in, in ourselves a love that exceeds our personal intentions suggests that the source of love is in us. And so that we have the Lord residing in us. And that love is a bright light.